So here we go. One, first install the basic app on your Android phone. Two, download the two basic HDR hacking programs and transfer them to the basic apps user folder in your phone. Three, read the instructions for how to run basic programs using the basic app. That's very simple. You do not need to learn to code in basic or understand the basic programming language. Four, set your GoPro to shoot photos at its highest resolution, which is 12 megapixels. Switch to ProTune shooting mode. Set white balance to native. Set color to flat. Set sharpness to low. Set ISO limit to 800. Set exposure to zero and set spot meter to off. Five, if you have a GoPro 4 black model, which does not have a viewfinder, you may like to first run the GoPro app from the GoPro company that turns your smartphone into a GoPro viewfinder so you know where and how to position your GoPro camera when you're ready to shoot HDR. Once that is done, remember to turn off the GoPro app and its Wi-Fi before you set up the GoPro for shooting HDR. 6. Setting up Wi-Fi on the GoPro is cumbersome. Fortunately, most of the more elaborate manual fiddling around with the various buttons only need to be done once. First, you need to essentially define the GoPro as a Wi-Fi device by assigning it a name and a password. That procedure of initializing the GoPro for Wi-Fi only needs to be done once and is discussed in the GoPro manual and not reproduced here. 7. Once the GoPro has been initialized as a Wi-Fi device, it also must be paired with whatever other Wi-Fi device it needs to be connected to. That pairing procedure unfortunately is also cumbersome, but luckily only need to be done once assuming it does not need any other Wi-Fi connections. In contrast to your smartphone or computer, the GoPro apparently only remembers the connection parameters from the last Wi-Fi connection. So let us go through the procedure for setting up your GoPro to communicate with Wi-Fi to your Android phone. Remember this more lengthy procedure that is a limitation of the GoPro only need to be done once under the assumptions just discussed. You need to use three different navigation buttons as shown here a mode button, a select button, and a settings button. If we're going too fast here, just pause the video. Also, you can always go back and replay a section. The procedures I'm going through here is for the GoPro 4 black model and may be slightly different for other models. So here we go. First, turn on the GoPro, then hit the mode button until you get to the photo screen. Then press the settings button and scroll through the settings using the mode button. Ensure the settings are as given previously under step 4. If that is not the case, change the settings. Once the photo settings are OK, scroll to the exit selection and press the select button. Now you have completed the configuration of the photo mode. Next you need to do a Wi-Fi pairing of the GoPro to your Android phone. This is done by pressing the mode button until you get to the setup screen. Then press select button and then the mode button to scroll until you get to the wireless selection. Then press the select button. Next press the mode button to scroll to the choice named GoPro app. 
GoPro app. Then press the select button. Next press the mode button to scroll to the selection named existing. Existing. Then press the select button. GoPro will now turn on and GoPro will listen to see if other Wi-Fi devices are in the neighborhood. Remember now to press the mode button until you again get the photo screen. This is easy to forget. Remember always to have GoPro in the photo mode after turning on Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi on the GoPro is now turned on, but we do not yet have a connection. We need to also turn on Wi-Fi on the Android phone. Once that is done, step 8, then GoPro will be listed as a Wi-Fi device with the name assigned earlier to the GoPro. Once you tap on the name, you will finally get the connection between the GoPro and your Android phone. Quite a lengthy procedure. Fortunately, this cumbersome procedure can now be avoided in the future under the assumptions I just discussed earlier. So in the future, uh, when you shoot HDR, you simply long press the settings button to turn on the Wi-Fi. Now when we have the Wi-Fi connection, we are ready to shoot HDR. Let us start with the simplest, namely creating bracketed exposure images. First, find and tap on the basic application icon. This will start the basic editor, which you do not want because you luckily do not need to write any basic code. Instead, you want to load the code or the program that is already written for you. To do so, you need to first tap the lower left corner of the Android screen to bring up the option panel. On the option panel, tap load and run. This will present all the files in the basic apps user folder that contains basic code that will run on your Android phone. Initially, you should only see the two files you earlier got from the GitHub repository on internet, namely the files named GoPro HDR Hack and GoPro HDR TL Hack. Simply tap on the file named GoPro HDR Hack to execute the basic code contained in this file. You are now running a basic program or code via the basic app. This particular basic program will help you to shoot the bracketed exposures needed for creating HDR photos. The first thing you will see on your Android screen is a confirmation of the Wi-Fi connection to your GoPro camera, which in this case earlier has been initialized as a Wi-Fi device with the name My GoPro One. If you see a name called Null, then you do not have the Wi-Fi connection that uh, need to be established before you run your HDR program. Next, your Android phone will give you the choice to start a bracketed shot. At this stage, you like to check that your GoPro is placed and aimed correctly with a rock-solid support, for example, on a tripod or on a solid stable surface. You can then tap the text press OK to start, which will start the bracketed exposure consisting of three individual shots with different exposure times. The exposure times are determined by the GoPro and depends of course on the available light in the scene. You will momentarily get a screen saying that recording is in progress while beeping. You will hear two beeps per shot for a total of six beeps before the three bracketed shots are completed. If you do not hear the six beeps, then there is a problem which can be caused by any of these listed conditions, or perhaps other conditions. After a completed bracketed exposure shot, you can immediately repeat the process to get more than a single HDR photo if you want. The next picture is an example shot in Iceland using this basic program and a single bracketed exposure producing three images that were processed by Adobe Photoshop and Camera Raw to produce the HDR image shown.
Now let us turn to the procedure of shooting HDR to create HDR time-lapse videos. We first start by ensuring we have a Wi-Fi connection between the GoPro and the Android phone as previously described. Then we start the basic program, open the option panel and tap load and run. This gives us a listing of the basic programs available in the user folder of the basic app. You should see the names of the two files that you downloaded from GitHub. Now this time we want to run the basic code contained in the file name GoPro HDR TL Hack to help you remember TL stands for time lapse. So we tap on that name. We can now enter the number of minutes we want to record the scene, in this case 20 minutes, so we tap OK. Next we enter how many seconds we want the HDR time-lapse video playback to be, in this case 3 seconds. So our 20 minutes scene recording will be compressed in time to 3 seconds. So now we tap OK. Before the recording starts, we will now get a summary of what the recording will involve. Based on our two timing input values, the basic program calculates that the speed increase factor will be, in this case, 400. The number of bracketed sequences will be 90, which involves taking three times as many individual shots, namely 270 images. The storage requirements for these number of images is not calculated in this version of the program. Finally, we are informed that the shooting interval, namely the time-lapse interval, will be 13.3 seconds. In other words, a sequence of three bracketed shots will be shot every 13.3 seconds apart. The program will now give us an option to do a test shot consisting of a single sequence of three bracketed exposures to check if the shots are satisfactory before embarking on the 20 minutes recording we have chosen in this case. It is more practical and simpler to do the test shot with the HDR photo program just demonstrated. Therefore, it is recommended that you skip the test shot and simply tap ignore. The message on the screen recording in progress while beeping tells us that the 20 minutes recording is now in progress. If you now hear the six beeps from the GoPro repeated at a regular interval, things are going well. You may then set your clock so you can come back in about 20 minutes. However, walking away with your phone in the pocket may not be a good idea. You may lose the Wi-Fi connection if you walk too far. Also, be sure that your phone does not enter sleep mode, which will pause the shootings. You may like to set up your phone so it does not enter sleep mode. Otherwise, you may need to tap the screen perhaps every five minutes to keep your phone awake. If you do it right, you get the fringe benefits of shooting time-lapse, namely a relaxing time where you easily can multitask your photography and videography, not bad at all. Of course, things can go wrong. Here's a listing of possible reasons. You are likely to make some errors in your first attempts, but you will learn from your mistakes and soon be good at it and have fun. So, when the 20 minutes recording is finished, you will get a summary uh, with the numbers previously explained. Next, you get the chance to continue. If you tap yes, the recording will continue another 20 minutes. This gives you the chance to extend the recording in the case where the scenery is still changing in an interesting way worth recording. So you may want to be ready to tap yes as soon as possible to avoid getting a large time lag between the first 20 minutes and the next 20 minutes of recording. 
the example given next shot in Iceland under quite challenging nighttime conditions demonstrates GoPro's great HDR potential unlocked by tapping into its firmware. This was made possible by a very convenient and simple coding using only an old Android phone and the GoPro and the tremendously versatile and flexible basic app developed by Paul Lawton and so generously provided for free. Further development of uh, the two basic programs may not come from me. If you take up the task, uh, please refer back to these uh, YouTube videos on my non-commercial YouTube channel where I try to promote environmental concerns. Please acknowledge my contribution in that way. More importantly, I hope that you make your programs available at no cost in the spirit of what I and Paul have done. Good luck shooting GoPro HDR. I hope the HDR photos and videos you generate will be successful in showing everybody the splendors of our natural world and promote its much needed protection. Good luck. <laughs>